Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 16th. I have my guest with me, Navy Thomas, that made it into the busted knuckle east. First up this week, there's a product called Three Doodler, and this was on the Kickstart website. If some of you know the Kickstart website, that's where you donate towards a, an inventor. Well, this is two guys. One of the guy is an inventor from MIT, and the other guy used to work for a toy company. And they made this thing that looks kind of like a, the uh, best way I could describe it is like a glue gun. Only plastic shoots out of it, and it instantly hardens as it goes out of the gun. And with that, you can actually draw 3D even into the air. I'll put up a little bit of video as I'm talking here. But they have some interesting designs. You can even trace stuff on paper. You can make wire frames. They suggest in the future that you could even use this thing for repairing plastics. I think maybe they even got this idea from looking at the way a glue gun works because it looks so similar to me. And they've already got $2 million in pledges. So I'm kind of thinking this thing will actually reach market. And it looks like the way it's designed. I don't think it should cost really much more than what a glue gun costs. Uh, maybe just that they have to have specialized plastic. So... Um, that may be the only expense that you have to really incur is just getting the refills for it. But I thought that's a pretty good invention. And I'll, As usual, all the links to everything I'm talking about will be down below in the description. So just click on those links. And you can go and see their video and they've got a whole web page describing everything. Um, second up, um, this was sent to me by 54 Shadow. It's just something, it, it's not really... Um, super hard. Anybody could do it. You just basically you take a piece of tubing or hose and you strap it onto a speaker. But this guy, by playing around with different sine waves and attaching them to the speaker and having an actu uh, use it as an actuator, it actually makes the sine waves out of the water itself. And using some of the tricks with the camera, I believe it was because he was filming at around 24 cycles per second with their 24 frames per second with the camera that using that effect too along with the speaker he got it looking like the sine waves would actually uh, stand still go forward or go backwards so it's kind of a simple thing to play around with and, and it looks kind of neat in the video if you check out the video it's kind of cool to watch and next up uh, anyone get to see the comet pan stars uh, as a matter of fact i was talking to tom about it and you did actually get a chance to see it didn't you when you were riding yeah when i was driving on highway 30 with the uh with the Barbie starting to shed oil, I, uh, I saw that light, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, you look back to the west, right, and you saw a little yellow speck? Yeah, when the road would, it was one of these, and every time I'd head south, then it would be right in front of my head. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I was looking at. Yeah, according to Sky and Telescope, yesterday was the last day you could actually see it in the west just after sunset with the unaided eye. For a few more days, you will be able to see it if you have an unobstructed view and binoculars, but it's getting so dim now, you're going to need binoculars to actually see pan stars. And as far as in Chicago, now he wasn't all the way into Chicago, he's out in the rural area. In my area, it has been cloudy every evening, so there hasn't even been a chance to observe it. And I've got like two or three more days, and I don't see any of those days being sunshiny. So uh, Sky and Telescope actually called it more of a speck than a spectacle because everybody that's seen it with the naked eye say it's just nothing but a little tiny yellowish uh, orangish speck they don't see the tail or anything I've seen some pictures of long exposures with it and one guy in Australia before it came up to the northern hemisphere got a pretty cool long exposure shot with it I'll put that one up for for you guys to see but actually our next chance to view anything really is Comet Ison really is the one to look for and that's going to be around November of this year and uh, Last up, myself, I want to ask a question of you guys that you can answer in the comments if you feel like. Make, uh, feel free to make a video reply. But I want to ask you guys, what technology that exists right now would you really like to see come to an end or like to see it die? For me, my personal answer to that is the internal combustion engine. I think it's been going on well over 110 years now. Yeah, I know some people don't, don't agree with that. But I think it's really ready now that the electric automobile should be developed as it's, you know, there, there's some of them coming on market now. And I would like to see eventually development to where in 10 years we have some practical electrical motorcycles. I think that technology of the combustion engine has gone as far as it can go. We need to go to the next step into the next level of technology. I mean, we've come from the, uh, like I told some people before, we've come from a landline telephone to carrying around basically not just telephones but little smart computers and using them to replace everything. It's time for the internal combustion engine to start sending its swan song. And nothing wrong with the uh, using them in parades and for museum pieces and people keeping them as uh, older vehicles, you know, to show off and stuff like that. I'm not anti-internal combustion vehicles, but it's just, it's time for the next great thing. So, anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. You guys take care. I will catch you next week.
Today's TED report brought to you by Keystone Light. Uh, I don't think so. The Stone. Yo.